and my E. Hey, were you able to find your P hat and your E? Yes. I hope so. P hat should be right in the middle of this, this number. Mm -hmm. So to find the thing right in the middle of this, you average them. So in our case, you're going to take 0.81 plus 0.58. You're going to figure that out, then divide by 2, which means that your P hat, or your point estimate, is how much? Like that? OK, I'll interpret that in just a second. E. E says, this is a difference of 2E. That's what that is. So if I subtract them and divide by 2, I'm going to find 1E. So we take our 0.81 minus 0.58, divide that thing by 2, and you're going to get E is what? Point what? Point one one five. Raise your hand if you get that. Good deal. Here's what this said. This says that if this is my confidence interval that someone figured out, they started with a sample proportion of how much? What stands for your sample proportion here? 0.695. Yeah, about 70%. Their, their sample proportion of whatever this dealt with was 0.695. Are you with me on that? They started with that. What was their margin of error? So about 11.5% margin of error from their information. So you can backtrack and figure out what they started with. Also, and let me refresh your mind on this, uh, one more way that you could write this. So if, if the problem said, okay, write this a different way. You're given this. Write it as p hat plus or minus e. You could do that now. You could say, oh, okay, that's 0 0.695 plus or minus 0.115. Or 70% plus or minus 11.5%. Basically, to translate that to, to this, P hat, P hat, E, E. Now you could write this in a different format. So you should be able to translate between formats, right? Be able to go from <coughs> this one, find out my P hat and my E. Do you feel okay on doing that? If you have your P hat and your E, well, you can write P hat plus or minus E. That's the other way that you can see this. If you're given P hat plus or minus E, well, you can pretty easily find that. You just add and subtract your E, and that will give you back that range. It's all the same numbers, just how you're, you're representing it. Raise your hand if you're okay with what we've talked about so far. Good deal. We're going to do one example. 
the last example we're going to do kind of illustrates all these concepts. Uh, I, it's, it's very similar to the one that's out of your book. Um, I don't take examples right out of your book, but this is very close. In a study of 1,300 randomly selected medical LS stands for lawsuits, medical lawsuits, 900 of them were eventually dropped. There's three parts to this. The first thing we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to find a point estimate. You tell me, do point estimates come from samples or proportion? I'm sorry, populations. Do point estimates come from samples or populations? Are you ever going to know anything about your population, folks? Then what's the only other place they can come from? Yes. They come from samples. Is this a sample? Is this every lawsuit that ever happened in the entire world? Mm -hmm. So is this a sample? Yes. Definitely. Let's find our point estimate. Now, what you need to know is the point estimate for a population proportion. What's the point estimate for a population proportion? Single value. What is it? What do you think? <coughs> point estimate. Population proportion. It's on, the, it's on the board three times. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten times. <laughs> what now? Sure, sure. But what letter do we use to represent it? Yeah. Ah, very good. The point estimate that you use to represent population proportion is p hat. That should not be a surprise. That's how I defined it last week. So p hat is a point estimate, folks. Point estimates come from samples. We have a sample here that's used to represent population proportion. Now, what I talked about is that we typically don't just leave it as a point estimate because we don't know how good it is. It's no range. So how can you figure out p hat here for this case? Can you do it? Can you do it? Yes. Are you just going to put 900? No, no, no. We can't just put 900 because we know p hat is a proportion, first of all. Are proportions ever going to be over 1? Now, proportion, the sample proportion of success, which is our p hat, was the number of successes you had over the total number of trials. Do you remember that? What is our success here? What is our success? Don't give me a number. Tell me what a success is. Very good. Dropped cases of success for us. How many of those do we have? Okay, how many did we randomly select? I want you to figure out what that is to the fourth decimal place, please. Were you all able to find 0.6923? Okay, stop it and listen to the interpretation. You have to be able to get this. This is the key to this class is interpretation. It's not the math. The math is easy. It's the interpretation. So what this says is that the point estimate, the single value, if you had to use one for your population proportion, would be 69.23%. In other words, in this sample, 69.23% of the medical lawsuits were dropped. 69.23% of the medical lawsuits were dropped. You with me? That would be the best estimate that I have for my population. Is it a good one? No idea. No idea. That's why we use a confidence interval. But it's the only one we have. Do you follow me on that? Okay. Next up, if that's our point estimate, let's use that to make up a 99% confidence interval. Use that. Make up a 99% confidence interval. I think I gave you some steps for that earlier, actually. First thing you would need to do is find your P, your Q, and your N. Your P hat, your Q hat, and your N. What's your P hat here, folks? Hey, yeah, you just found it. 0.6923. What's your Q hat? How, how would you find your Q hat? So 0.3077. What was it? Was that right? And your N. What's your N? Your N. The sample size that you took. N stands for sample size, true? What is it?
That was step number one. What was step number two? You have in your notes. You can look back at your notes if you want to. But again, let me remind you that you are going to have to make the transition from looking at your notes to actually doing these problems on your own because that's how your test is going to be. Right? You're not going to have your notes in front of you. So you need to kind of know what to do here. You can't just be looking back and forth all the time. It's not going to really work. So we found P hat, Q hat, and the next step is to do what? The critical value. Good, because we need to somehow associate a confidence interval, confidence level, with our problem. The only way that you can do that, the only way I've taught you, the only way that exists, is to take that confidence level and translate that into a critical value. So you need to know 99% clicks off in my head and the number pops in. What number pops in for a Z alpha over 2 of 99%? 2.5%. Very good. Now let me throw you for a loop here, okay? Stop. What if this was a 98? What is it now? You, you don't know in your head, do you? No. Good, I don't either. It's fine. It's not one of the common ones. Could you figure it out? No. Again, how, this is very quickly, how you figure this out for a 98. Point zero 0.01 would go here, point zero 0.01 would go there. Do you see that? You look up point zero 0.01 in your table, it's going to give you a negative z-score, and then you take the positive of that. Okay, so it's going to give you that z-score. So this, I don't know what the z-score is, but for point zero 0.01, it's going to give you something, that would be your critical value, only the absolute value of that, so the positive version of that. You with me on that? That's where, that's where this came from in the first place. That's how I showed you that. Okay, so back to our actual thing, 99%. What do we do after that? If you find that 99% critical value, <coughs> oh, E, that's why we have all this information labeled. So how we find our E, is we took the Z alpha over 2 square root P hat Q hat over N. Do you remember that formula? Plug it in, see what you get. You shouldn't need me to plug this number, these numbers in. You should be able to do that on your own. Basically, we're just substituting some values in. The Z is 2.575, P hat was 0.6923, Q hat was 0 0.3077, all over our 1300, which is our N. I think I gave you a way to do this last time without doing any uh, rounding at all, right? I told you you multiply these first, then you divide, then you take your square root of the answer if you have to, and then you multiply by 0.25, I'm sorry, 2.575, and you get some E. It should be a decimal point should not be a whole number. Should it? No. It's a proportion after all. Did you find your E? In our case, what is our E, please? Round it to the fourth decimal place for me. 